So where are you right now, man? I'm in Madrid at home. I'm okay. in, my, in my studio at home where I, where everything starts off. Oh, really? So you make the music there and then what, you re-record it in a different studio or is it all made there? So I use my studio hours to to arrange and to record finals, but I always record the, the demos at home or with a, a friend. So I use my studio time uh, like consciously, I don't go and it, I, I'm a writer, I'm a lone writer, so I'll write at home most of the time and then I'll take it to the studio and there the magic will happen, but it won't be like a, like a composition magic. It's more like an arrangement or a production magic. That's, that's how I enjoy working because I like going to the studio and, and having the, 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 like the bar set and everything like set to just work on it. Where are I you? Love, I love that. I'm in New York, uh, New York City, but um yeah it's busy out here i'm in my car in traffic bro but uh i pulled over for this because i've been listening to your music like while i've been driving around man and um real quick i got to comment on what you just said i think that's smart and i think more people should do that because it's like you could really even if you're just doing a voice note on your phone like you can get pretty far along in the process you don't yeah. have to wait till you're actually in the recording studio so i think what you're doing is really smart and productive that's cool to hear man i like that a lot my grandfather always said something that that's really that's really like impacted me. Uh, it's something that he didn't uh, make up himself, but it's something that he used to say. Because when I told him I made music, he 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 always like found these points in common with me and and, and would say stuff like this, like like things that old and uh, wise people say. And he said, inspiration hits people that always have their their pen in the hand more. So if you always have your your pen on your hand, it'll hit you more because you'll be there like longer. I love that. Yeah, it's like, be it's with, like with the yeah, it's like it's like when people say uh, you like the only people who get lucky are the people who are prepared. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The, the the people that like all the musicians I know or all the writers I know um, are always they they always have a chat a WhatsApp chat with themselves. One of the first ones always. So I have mine pinned. So my my studio, my my WhatsApp, it always starts with the same chat where I always uh, shoot my voice notes in it because I remember my the melodies or I remember ideas or even if I I'm at a place where I'm like or socially having lunch with someone, I just write something down really fast. Uh, if they said something interesting or or, or if something happened, and, and then I'll move on without being like disrespectful. But I always have to keep that because documenting that and then using it for 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 inspiration is is that's price it's like that's money that, that that's re that translates to money if the idea is good and you're be able, able to start a song or continue a song or make a song richer in that sense that's that's money there i love that yeah you're right man and i i can tell how passionate you are about this because even before we started recording you were telling me that like you know music is it for you or it's yeah. like one of the main things and I can see it. I, I, I see it, man. And that's what I was telling some of the people you work with um, because I'm not fluent in Spanish at all. Uh, but like, like uh, just, you know, like, so uh, Mi Esposa is de Paraguay. Yeah. Mi Abuelo is de Durango, Mexico. Mi Suegro is de Paraguay, et cetera, et cetera. But me, myself, I'm not fluent in Spanish. But I told the people you work with, you know, I don't need to be to hear the passion and confidence and your flow and your, your lyrics and how you're pre like presenting and performing on the track. I, I could hear you and I could feel your presence. You know what I mean? Like I like, and then I look up the lyrics and translate it, whatever. But before I even get that far, it's and some of your music, some of the, some of the lyrics are in English as you know, but like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I know you're good because when you're that good, it comes across. It doesn't matter if you know all the words, you know what I'm saying? Thank you, my brother. I appreciate it. I appreciate it for real. It, it it means a lot to me, and and it's one of the first times I've gotten like actual uh, backing and actual support because because you get a lot of feedback, but this is like actual support from across the pond. So it means a lot, and 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 it's it's one of the biggest and best compliments you can get when when you just connect with someone just based off how how you're singing and and how you're saying what you're saying, not even what you're saying, but how you're saying it, which is sometimes even more important. So I, I appreciate it. I'm, my English is a bit rusty. I, I I grew up in an Indian household, and I do I've I've always spoken English, but 
since I've been in Madrid, it's been like four years and it's been a bit more rusty because my day to day is always in, in Spanish and all my networking, all my work. So, so it's a bit rusty, but, but, but I'm sure we'll get through fine. You sound amazing to me, man. But yeah, I, I, I love it, man. And, um, that's something I wanted to talk about real quick. Cause I want to talk about a lot of things with you, but just real yeah. quick, like, what is your opinion on the music scene in Spain? I guess overall, but then also like for you, like with your sound. So my sound, I'd say, is one that's starting to be consumed more now. So like, so I I, I think I, I wouldn't define my sound in in, in, in a couple of lines because because I don't think that would be a something positive to do. But I do think that there's things that are always kind of there, which is like maybe a slower tempo, uh, darker moods, uh, combining the singing and rapping. It's it's like it's 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 something that is already existed because R&B in Spain has been here for a while. But this darker R&B is just, is just coming out now, like more of it. Now. So, I mean, I'm really grateful because people, I, I feel like they fuck with it. And I, and I feel like there is a market, but I feel like the biggest markets right now are, are rap and like trap. Like rap, I mean like bars, like 32 bar songs, even no hooks. Like th those are really big here um, in Spain. Uh, and there's many people that I can point out that, 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 have made a career and a really big career uh, off of it. But there's also like, obviously, thanks to Rosalia and Tangana, like the, the autochthonous, like Spanish sound mixed with other other stuff is, is working really well. And then there's like artists like, like I'd say, uh, Israel or, or Buceta that bring other stuff to the table. Uh, obviously for me, I'm a Canarian, I'm Spanish, but I'm Canarian, which goes before being Spanish because because I, I really am from, from the Spanish country, but the territory and the culture is really different where I'm from, which is uh, eight islands this, next to Morocco. Um, that scene to me is, is like, that scene uh, deserves a lot more attention in my opinion right now because the density, the, the population density compared to the to the artists that are coming out and putting out uh, wavy shit is, is really good. Like the ratio is really good. We're just 2 million people and there's so many artists coming out that, that are that are good wavy in all genres, rap, reggaeton, R&B, trap, uh, indie, everything. So I think the Canarian scene, inside the Spanish scene is booming. And I think Madrid in terms of industry is a really good place to be right now. But all, all like in general, the Spanish scene is is really strong, and it's it's not just the big names that are that are helping. It's also like the the emerging artists that are starting to do smaller smaller gigs that are starting to you know you can you can really tell that people can can take off in like a year, so it, it's possible. Like you can you can do it. You can really do because because there's backing. There's there's people uh, that are ready to 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 put you in a in a in a work. Um, environment there's really other profiles that aren't musicians that are starting to come out like creative directors managers uh, people in, in in fashion people in in like all kinds of booking and things are happening so i'm really happy in, to be in spain right now to be honest hell yeah that's that's so cool to hear man because see a lot of the people who listen to our podcast or watch on youtube or audio or maybe we sometimes we put things on tiktok and instagram you know a lot of people that listen are aspiring artists they're like managers who are kind of starting out. And so like everything you've been saying so far is like really educational and useful for everyone who listens to this, but also like the insight you gave us on what's going on right now in Spain on like in your world. Um, that's so cool to hear because like in case anyone listening didn't know that, like now they do. And now they can like keep that in mind for when they do tour Europe or target yeah. Europe or, you know, reach out to you or any anyone from the area you're from originally or any of that. That's really cool, man. And one thing you just said, I gotta I gotta follow up a question because uh I noticed that you love you love, based on what I've seen on your Instagram, you love like giving credit and talking about each part of the process. And not everyone really does that. So like like yeah, you talk about like fashion or creative design, I guess, or your tag it's like you put a video up and then you tag each person who was involved. Like, I don't see people doing that all the time. Like how important is the process and the parts to you? So for me to, to be working with people that are so talented, uh, people that have other clients that are much bigger than me, but people that are, work with me, uh, in, 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 in have a personal, a personal investment in my project 
to me, something that's priceless because you really can't buy that. Like, you can have good professionals and you can contact good professionals and you can pay good fees, but it's never going to be like working with someone that genuinely fucks with you. So to me, that's the minimum I can do. Like having a, a good infrastructure, a good creative infrastructure from creative direction to actually putting out that shit and, and, and working with the filmmakers, even the people that are lighting your, your video, like each part of that process, if, if it's all well connected and if everyone did their best, you can really tell. And many times I feel like I can tell that in, in, in many projects and mine is one of them. So when, when the people are there, not because I have the money to pay their, their fee, but because they actually like the music and they've been listening to me before and, and I'm just trying to work with them and I can tell that we're, 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 we're well connected and we have a, um, a good workflow and, and, and we share, uh, likes and we share like, uh, aesthetic, uh, direction. When, when all that comes together with the music, which is my my area, but I, I also participate in like all the image and all and the videos and, and everything. When all that comes together, I think it's something that's priceless that you can tell that the people are fuck with me and, and my music. So that's that's really important to me to to have a team that really is is out there not only working but but representing you. In, in, in their work, like going out and being creatives in the industry and saying, look, I did this and I did this because he's he's an emerging artist, but I did this because because this is really wavy. Like, like um, um, forgetting the numbers and forgetting the charts and forgetting all that. It, it's like what you said, when, when it's from the heart, you can you can tell. So the minimum I can do apart from paying them well is is giving credit. And I'm proud as well. I'm proud to be working with them. So I'm asking. That's cool, man. Yeah, yeah. Everything you just said makes sense. And like I said, like just looking at your Instagram, I could I could tell you really are like a big picture person, and you you care about all the little details, but you're a big picture person, and I love that. And like shout out to the people you work with, like you said, shout out yeah. to everyone at Slowly. You know yeah. what I mean? Like how I guess real quick, man. I gotta ask, like, why did you decide to work with them? Because obviously you didn't have to. You know what I mean? Like you're in Spain. Like like why why work with the Slowly guys and girls and everyone involved like and like how has it been uh i i'm working with slowly because i fell in love with the with the with Agiai Agiai. that's the mexican anti-boy band and pop uh, uh new genre the, the five guys that make wavy music i fell in love with them I yeah worked, they're dope yeah we made this song that's called all my way in the process we really like I, I can tell like we really got along and their manager Adrian B, um, I've never felt that way with anyone in the industry. So I, I was open with him and I was like, yo, you like my music. I like what you've done with these guys. I can see how solid you've made the project. I can see how you're like the sixth guy in, in the in the boy band. Like they're five, but I can tell you how you're the sixth. And I'm, I really need that piece in my project. And I knew, I knew he liked me and he, he liked my music. Uh, so I wasn't, I wasn't doubtful to, to hit him up and be like, yo, let's do this. And, um, since then it's been like, I speak with him all every day. I've been speaking with him every day for a year and a half now. And, and I went there, I made half my album with, with them, with Finks. Finks is the, the producer on the, he's, he also sings, but he's the main producer on the boy band. And that just, we locked in and, and really fucked shit up. In, in, in like 10 days, we made like five songs. Four of them are on the album. One of them became an interlude. It's like we, we, we really uh, took advantage of our, our time together. Damn. Which four on the album? So the ones that Finks did are the first one, the second, the third, the fourth, and the last. That's all. Really? Things. Yeah. Last so one, he, did, he did the I intro, he did Habibi, yeah. he did yeah. Big Dog Freestyle. Yeah. Puliendo Pakistani, and he did Sacrificios. So he did the first four and the last one. And to be honest, he made my favorite song with me. Which one? Um, in terms of, of general favorite song, Puliendo Pakistani is my favorite song because I feel like it's the most a beer, like the most me. But in terms of in terms of sound, the first one. That's what you know. That sound I, is... Yeah, I knew it, bro. I knew it. I listened to the whole project today. And... Um... That's what I wanted to ask you. I wanted to ask about the sound on the intro because um, it's different and it's different for a lot of reasons, right? Like the song is different, like your delivery is different, but 
the bass is different. It's like very, um, and also just in general, the vibe, it's different. It's very unique. I mean, I, I, you own that basically. So like, why did you start with that sound? And in general, what does sound mean to you? But I really want to talk about the intro. Like, tell us about that sound, man. Let's talk about the, the intro. Fun fact, I, w I had writer's block for about one month and a half before I went to Mexico. So on the plane to Mexico, I, I to be honest, I, I, I trust myself a lot and, and I really trust the process and I really trust that, that I, I got it. But on the plane there, I was really doubtful because, you know, you're, you're crossing the pond for the first time. You're doing something like outside of home and, and, and that, that, that's that's expected to be big and you don't know how you feel about it. And then you reach there, you meet things, things plays these scores and, and it's done. Like I really made that song in 20 minutes and, and it's the first thing I did when I was there. So that was the start of my relationship with things which today to today he's top three musicians that i i love working with like he's he's really one of the best uh beat makers and producers i know and that unlocked the the the, the rest of the songs like the rest of the songs that i made in mexico happened because of that one song last one you know and that was originally the out the outro that was the last one but i put sacrifices last and i put uh last one you know up because i wanted to say without saying it that this is my sound this is what you're gonna get even though the other songs are different las los nudos is like it sets the the tone for the whole thing um that song the bass is different because uh in post in post production when i brought that song home kido which is the the producer that finished it because i finished it with him and, and we put some new new stuff in it he used um this is for all the producers out there he used a plugin that's called sausage fattener and this plugin, what it what does is it gets uh, subs and bass, and it makes it fatter and and dirtier. So that's that's what gave it that rough kind of kind of unapologetic sound to the bass that I start with. And unapologetic is a word that I use to to, to describe the whole thing because I'm really I'm really being I'm 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 not cutting like I, I'm I'm really um como se dice? Sin rodeos, like I'm not, I'm not giving rounds. Like I'm going directly to the point with, with what I think in this album. So that little thing and that little bass that comes in when you when you don't expect it and almost slaps you in the face is what I wanted the lyrics to feel like as well. And that's what puliendo to me feels like. Rodeos feels like that, and and like big dog. Like I like when 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 they're hitting you in the face. And about the sound in Las Vaginudas, apart from this, apart from the fat bass. The fact that the phrases are separate, like I, I, I'm giving time between phrase and phrase. I'm not doing like a bar, 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 like big dog, which is like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I'm leaving space because I, I want the the what I'm saying to to be digested. So that and the dark and the ambient mood and the and the big bass is something like you feel like you're in a you feel like you're almost like in a nave. In a, in a, in a, how do you say, it? like in um underwater, you feel like underwater. So that's what I wanted to, to get. That's so sick. Yeah, and for everyone listening, uh, I'll throw that song. I'll make it the intro to the playlist. So everyone listening, go go uh, stream the playlist, the Monday to Monday playlist, so you can hear what we're talking about. But yeah, I love it, man. When I heard that song, I was like, oh my god, like this is your sound, like this is unique, this is crazy. Like you said, it slaps you in the face. Like the bass is, I guess. It's like you got to go hear this. Everyone listening, go go stream the song. You'll you'll hear what we're talking about. But I love that man. And, and like you mentioned briefly, like some of your lyrics are similar to that. You know, like I could tell like you're saying things like in almost like a. Sometimes you say things in a very like blunt in your face way, hmm. and uh, I like it. Like it's cool. It's cool to hear you say that. Um, I don't know. Like, what's your favorite lyric from the from the project? Uh, is there favorite. is there something like, like that stands out or like kind of touched your heart or was from your heart? Yeah, the the song that, that that touched the most to the people and me is Sacrificios, which is the outro. Because in the outro, I'm, I'm giving thanks. Like, I'm talking about sacrifices in general, and I'm talking about, like, in that song, I, I'm name-dropping people. So I, I, I name-drop my father, my ex-girlfriend, all from, from a, a point where you don't know if I'm, like, jaded or if I'm thankful. So I wanted to have that, that uh, leave it open to, to how people interpret it. So I've just put that there, and, and I, I let people decide. My creative di director wasn't, he, he didn't agree with what I did, because he thought, so me and my father have a, 
more or less relationship is, is not too solid. And he said that these things live forever and that he doesn't know if 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 in a couple years, if I fix shit with my dad, I'm gonna repent. But I said, there's nothing that's gonna change how I feel or how I felt for this past year and a half or two years making this album. And it's something really important. And it's something like, in, in the song I say, it feels sad to not celebrate victories with my dad. And it feels sad to not have the backing of my ex-girlfriend when, 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 when I'm losing. So that you can take it, however they take it is, is, isn't my problem. Like I, I make songs and I write lyrics and, and I do it from the heart and I, I, I put it out and however people want to take it, that's not my problem. But that kind of decision, I think is risky, but it's blunt and people like that because I'm not filtering my music to, to be on charts and I'm not fil filtering my music to be universal. My music isn't like, I, I understand that I'm giving up certain things when I am so specific and I name drop people and I'm, and I'm talking about specific um, uh, things that I've lived that maybe in this moment, people can't relate to everything, but they can relate to some. So when I make a song that you can relate to really, it, 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 it's really describing things that you've, that I, that I feel like people can feel with me. But I know it's not something universal, like, like uh, happiness in general or sadness in general. I'm putting things like uh, 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 scenery in there, where for example, in Puliendo Pakistani, I say, I can't eat, I can't pronounce the uh, these bottles and she knows it, but I ask the sommelier, which is the, the the guy that pours the wine, for recommendation. But that's the only time I ask anyone for anything, because with you, I always know what to do. So that like double, double. I'm giving one of of, of how humble and how I, I understand that I can't pronounce this wine and I'm not a rich guy. But that's the only time where I ask for help and recommendation, because I'm I always know what to do with with you. Like in that sense, I'm saying it sexually. I'm hinting the sexually, but in general, I also like that double kind of bar where you're not listening to people flex about millions and just kind of feeling uplift, uplifted, but you can feel that if you're a guy like me, like you can feel that if you're a person like me who's just going on with life and, and, and someone very passionate. I love that, man. Like, that's crazy because, see, you're, uh, you're making real art and you're being blunt and you're being honest and you're coming from the heart and you're coming from your emotion, like wearing your emotions in the music. And like that itself is something that a lot of people never even get that far. Like a lot of people, most people, like if you really think about it, most people who buy a microphone, most people who have nice speakers or Ableton or whatever, a computer, like most people try to make music if they want to, if it's a passion, but they don't get that far because you got to be vulnerable and you're so vulnerable, blunt, like you're so much yourself it comes back to what I said earlier. It's like, you don't need to understand the music to hear that. I actually just heard you say what you needed to say. And I heard it, you know what I mean? Like it, I heard you say it from the heart. I heard that part of your voice that was coming from the heart. And that what's crazy is I need to say this real quick. And I need to ask you about it. You remind me a lot of, um, like you remind me much more of like a raw, raw talent, raw energy in the hip hop space than most people I listen to, right? Like you're really giving me that vibe. And that's part of the reason I like it because most of the, most of the musicians I know are in the hip hop space anyway. And then I manage producers in the hip hop space and, you know, things like that. But I could hear it in your voice and it reminds me so much of what I hear in a lot of these young hip hop artist voices too. Um, do you listen to anyone in the hip hop space or at all? Thank you, man. I really pre uh, appreciate the, the the feedback, and I appreciate you coming out and, and having this chat with me, and and uh, kind of interrupting your your drive to 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 have a chat with me. To me, it means a lot. Um, I am I'm a big fan of hip hop in general. I really I really I really put that in my in my in my day to day. Like it's really a big part of it, and I appreciate not having a car in Madrid because I'm I walk a lot in Madrid. Um, I do public transport if if it's far, but if not, if it's a thirty minute walk, I'll do it because because mm, driving here is crazy and and it's it's not like a city that's that's good for for people to to move around and, and park and, and and shit. And I use that academically, and I use that for pleasure and to listen to music and to discover music. So Spotify, um, and Apple and Tidal, they all have really good play playlists that are made for me, uh, based on what I listen to. 
And lately, I've been listening to a lot of Summer Walker, Ellie Softre, Frank Ocean, of course, Brent. I love Brent. I have Brent and Frank Ocean tatted on me on on my on my legs. Damn. Uh, I love P and B. Party Next Door is probably one of my biggest influences. Um, the whole Toronto scene, I really like, like Nav, Magic Jordan, Roy Woods, uh, Drake, all, all the t Toronto sound is, is, is when I, I love how 40 produces. I love that also. Um, I really like Jack Harlow. He's one of the latest ones to, to discover. Uh, he's been popular for a time, but I just discovered him like eight, nine months ago. And, uh, hip hop in general, I, I love more so r and I'd say, and that, that feeling of, of wanting to do stuff that's spaced out like f phrases that are spaced out but that hit i've i've got from people like party like one song that marked me a lot was savage anthem because it's a six minute song but he really uses the, the pauses very well he really he really knows how to use tempo and pauses really well and that's something that that i feel like you said uh you feel like i have raw talent and i'd say i don't like i'd say I'd say if I hadn't been at this for 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 long and every day, I wouldn't I wouldn't be making the mu music and putting out music that I think you'd like. I think it's it's something that I've developed with time, and I think I'm starting off now. Like I I I haven't I haven't I don't feel comfortable with stopping uh, stopping music right now because I don't like what I've made a hundred percent. Like I'm always hungry for more, and I feel like I could I could make wavier shit if i was a better musician in terms of keys or if i worked on my voice so i'm always like trying to trying to step that up but i appreciate it. i really appreciate it i do think i'm not one of those people that was gifted with this because if you listen to the first the first mixtapes i've i made it's like it's really off but i appreciate i appreciate <laughs> it. oh man well yo bro like i don't know i love what you're making so keep making it keep going keep going up keep going crazy but um <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, I think this is a pretty good intro to you. We should probably do another interview in like six months or something. But yeah, we're going to chop this up. Uh, that's pretty much the whole thing, man. Thank you so much. And yo, Aaron, you could jump back in real quick.